I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 30th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. I am out walking again, finally. It, yeah, my foot still hurts, but not nearly as much as it did. I am in La Borio, heading towards Utiava, and just getting out, enjoying a beautiful day, some nice sunshine, and a chance to, to just get some fresh air and do the show for you guys again, which I'm trying to get back into being outside. Boy, that is bright. Should have brought sunglasses. I always forget something. Every time I go to do the show, I step outside and I either forget the microphone or my hat or my sunglasses or my shoes. It could be anything. Once in a while, it's my keys. That's really bad. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's just, it's rough. Partially because I don't have any space or any time. I'm always rushed as, in case you guys hadn't paid attention, I am missing every thumbnail as these go live this week because all of these are being edited hours before they actually go live. I also have an upcoming massive problem that's going to make this all much, much harder than it is currently. Right now, my internet in Leon is 70 by 70 fiber. It's really fast, works great, and uh, it makes it relatively easy to do the show. In our new location, far out in Sutiava, we have not managed to find a provider who will give us 70 by 70 or even 50 by 50 uh, who we're looking at getting, they're for some reason moving to asymmetric now, which is the worst, they're Americanizing our internet, and uh, we're looking at getting speeds like 200 by 30. The 200's fine, the 30 is not, that's a major problem. I spend so much of my time doing the uploads for you guys, and that's gonna take us, that's less than half what I have today, uh, and plus, you know, there's other stuff going on in the house. So right now, uh, everyone in the house uses a tiny bit and I use most of 70. Well, that little bit that everyone uses is going to be a lot more noticeable with only 30 and I'm going to be using so much all the time. We're just going to be constantly waiting for that. So I'm really worried about that, but we can't find a carrier who will give us something better. And we're not even sure how we're getting the 70 by 70 where we are. Clearly there's fast speeds in the country, but we can't figure out how to order them. So this is a major problem at our new location. We're talking to everybody, Tigo, Claro, Teco, and uh, we don't even know who we use currently, which is a bit of a problem. It's all, it's actually harder to reach these companies and figure out what's going on than you think. None of the information's on the website. So I'm gonna have to compile some of what we know for you guys. The upside is that prices really aren't bad. Uh, the kind of things that we're looking at are, are bundles with, um, television and uh, telephone, which of course you don't want, but uh, if you get the bundle, and I know like Alan just moved to having a bundle because it actually lowered his cost. So like, well, if we give you TV, you know, we'll, we'll pay you to have TV. And he's like, what now? So he let them pay him to have TV. So not that he watches it, but now he has it and his internet costs less. They're weird about that stuff. But uh, uh, so we're going to be getting, we think, uh, Claro 200 by 30 uh, with with television and stuff, which I'm actually interested in because it's Nicaraguan television. And that's something that obviously we don't get in any other fashion. So having access to that is actually interesting in a number of ways. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know how much I'll actually use it, but I will use it some, whether it's putting on the local Nicaraguan sports uh, or the morning shows or just, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna investigate some of that with you guys. Obviously I can't show that on the show, but we'll talk about it once, uh, once I have a chance to do that. And we've got to get that hooked up pretty soon because we're supposed to be moving into the new house tomorrow, uh, or at least getting the keys and, and getting ready to move in tomorrow. Uh, so that's, that's all, all happening right now. Uh, before I go on to today's topic, please remember to like and subscribe. Put your comments below. Take a moment. Really, just that, hitting that like button and, and you know, forwarding this on to a friend and, of course, buying me a coffee. Those things all really really help the channel. I really appreciate that everybody takes the time to do that. It, it makes such a huge difference. So it was asked uh, yesterday uh, in the notes. I'm so far behind that literally it was asked yesterday. So if you look at the questions, it's actually like in the future because of the week delay. And anyway, uh, why did I leave Panama to come to Nicaragua? And that's a good question because Panama's fantastic. Why would I leave Panama to come to Nicaragua? Um, and I think we'll answer the real question at the end is why did I choose to stay in Nicaragua at the end? But, so I first lived in Panama. It was my first time in Latin America uh, in uh, 2015, in early 2015. And um, we uh, flew in uh, when we moved there. And we lived there very briefly. It was, it was the shortest of all of our stints abroad. Um, and uh, we had gone to uh, uh, Panama City. We flew into Panama City, got a little taste of it. Um, and then, uh, everybody's yelling at me there. Got some kids. 
and uh, the the condo that we got, we actually rented a condo out in a village called Rio Alto, uh, which is a few hours west of Panama City on the Pacific Coast. Really nice region, nice and nice and quiet and relaxed, uh, very chill area. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, oh gosh, that was outrageously dangerous. Um, and it was a beautiful area. We had a great modern high-rise apartment in this really great uh, uh, kind of development. There was like seven or eight high-rises out on the Pacific, hours from the city. So behind our high-rises was just open fields. It was just open countryside. So it was beautiful that it was empty and country and all green. And on the horizon, we could see, see the uh, volcano at El, at El Valle and uh, you know, the storms would roll in. We had this really long view of them rolling in over the volcano and coming across the plains. And our other side was just straight view onto the Pacific. Our condo actually looked out onto the Pacific. I would sit on the balcony and look out at the ocean. And we had in our complex, uh, directly under our windows, we had like three swimming pools. And in our complex, we had uh, the Western Hemisphere's largest saltwater lagoon, which is man-made. Um, it was so large, it had boats on it and everything. Like, it was crazy. It was such a nice place. We loved it. And uh, obviously, it was a bit, a little bit, a little bit pricey, but it was, it was quite affordable. Uh, and we lived right off the Pan American Highway, so it was easy to get places. But we were not close to any major city. We were pretty remote. Uh, but it had some, but it's so, it was, it's important to kind of note there was so much there that it seems like it must have been really full of stuff. But it wasn't. Things like restaurants, they existed, but it was really hard to find any amount of food. We actually had to go grocery shop and cook for ourselves pretty much all the time, unless we were going to take the time to go in somewhere like to Panama City, which we did. And Panama City is one of my favorite cities. I absolutely love it. I prefer Guatemala City, honestly, but Panama City is fantastic. Uh, and, you know, easily I would live in the city, no problem. But overall, Panama was just, it was a bit more expensive. And the groceries were quite expensive. So cooking at home did not have this giant savings that you might hope that it would. And that's a little bit of a problem. We got a little cat here who's got to say hi. Hello, little kitty. Oh, they always run away. All the skittish kitties here. And so, so we did not really enjoy that part of the experience so much, the high cost cooking at home thing. Of course, if we lived there longer, if we'd really gotten to, I'm sure we could have gotten that down, could have fixed a lot of things. Um, there's a lot more of the country we could have explored. We did explore quite a lot. Um, we explored the central region. We explored the uh, Suero Peninsula in the south. We explored the city. We explored the the free zone. And the, we did lots of canal stuff and the museums. And we just absolutely loved Panama. It was fantastic. I had to return for a while to the United States for work. And so we were in a position where we really needed to leave Panama. Now, the advantage of Panama over a lot of places for Americans at least, is that you automatically get a six month visa and all this flexibility. So if you're ever looking for a place, you have no idea what you want to do and you want kind of the Latin American experience, but you want a lot of flexibility to stay for a long time with no paperwork, you want no questions asked, you want a place that's safe, but has a lot of American resources and just, Panama fits a lot of things really well. It's a fantastic place. And I, I often recommend it as kind of a, a first foray into Latin America. I think it's a, it's a good option for that. Uh, and, and, and so that was great, but we had to come back to the States. So we were back in the States for all, I'm going to cross the street because it is too much sun and it's like dappled in a bad way. So if I go over here, now I'm just in the shade. Actually, the colors are kind of better when we do this. Um, so we were, we were stuck working in the U S for a little while and then, and then had the freedom to, to head out again. And we were thinking about just heading back to Panama. We're like, we could just turn around and get a different condo um, and stay in Panama for a while. But it was our first time in Latin America and it was so fantastic. Dominica and I, my wife, uh, were like, you know, we really should explore somewhere else in Latin America. Uh, Panama was great, but what if it's just the tip of the iceberg um, or the opposite given it's in the tropics. And so we said, well, we, okay, let's look at Central America but different, right? It's it's clearly Panama has a South American vibe, but you could also get a little bit of the Central American vibe while there, especially as you go out West. And so we said, you know, 
let's we, we need to look at Central America, but where do we go? And so we did a little bit of research, but one of the things that came up for us was, well, in about 2005, when we were um, not just married, but more recently married, um, we had seen, and I'm guessing 2005, I think it's when it was, we saw House Hunters International, of all things, and they showed houses in Nicaragua, I'm sure now that it was in San Juan del Sur, and, um, and it looked really interesting, and that we both remembered really being blown away by how beautiful and interesting and, and completely unexpected that Nicaragua had seemed to us. And so when this kind of discussion came up of we need to look at Latin America, but not Panama, but we think Central America because we don't want to be super far from home. We had reasons we had been expecting, um, and, and I don't know all the details at the time, we had been planning to be in Argentina and Chile uh, coming up really close to that time period and some things fell through and we didn't end up going and we never ended up going We still haven't been um, Although I'm hoping hopeful that I will get to see them, but we had been planning to do a cruise around the southern tip um, somewhere around that time and That had been on our schedule and so our schedule was all thrown into disarray for some different work reasons and stuff and so uh, It's a long story. I had a bunch of work vacation stored up at the time and then they changed their policies on vacations and took away years of planning that we had done. It was, we were really upset um, about the behavior of this terrible, terrible company that I worked at. At the time, one of my many stories of why you don't want to work at nonprofits. And uh, um, so, so Nicaragua just came up as this like, well, we, we, we don't really know enough about it. And that made it more interesting that we couldn't put our finger on any particular thing that we knew about it other than we had seen Boyd Sprite. Seen this House Hunters International and it, and it had given us such a great impression, both of us, 10 years earlier, that why not check it out? So, so my wife went and did some research because I was really busy working for the time we were in the States. So I didn't have a lot of time to look into things and make decisions. She went and she found a house in Granada, uh, uh, La Casa de los Arcos, Los Arcos, uh, on the north side of El Centro. And she showed it to me and she's like, look at this house. It has a beautiful swimming pool. It's got enough space for us and the kids. It's really beautiful, but we can walk to downtown to get it. Let's do it. And so it was really to quite some degree based on the finding of this really perfect house. And it really was, it was a great house um, in Granada. And it just, between that and, and knowing that Nicaragua was really interesting, we just took a chance on it. And so we came to Granada later that year um, and then we ended up having to leave Nicaragua in a panic uh, because of family stuff later in the year. So we, we didn't get to stay as long as we had intended. Both Panama and Nicaragua ended up being shortened a bit um, because of things going on uh, externally. But uh, it what we learned from that particular trip was that uh, it, it reaffirmed how much we enjoyed being in Latin America. Uh, it uh, helped us really establish that Central America really did work well for us. Um, it also highlighted to us um, how important it was that we were so close to family back home. Both Panama and Nicaragua worked out really well for coming back to the U.S. when we needed to. And so, so it was a great experience. Um, what we did get as a takeaway, though, is we, we really didn't enjoy Granada that much. We loved Nicaragua. Nicaragua was so good. But Granada is a city in our location within the city didn't really do it for us. So we had no desire to come back to that exact location. Um, and then we ended up living in Europe for a long time. When it came time to be living somewhere uh, permanently, um, obviously we had, we had our pick of locations uh, and deciding on, so that's, that's the first piece of the question. Why did we move from Panama to Nicaragua? Simply because we had to leave Panama. We didn't and then we just made the decision not to go straight back and Nicaragua was where we decided to go as the next location. So it was, it was not a huge, you know, Panama didn't make the cut and we thought Nicaragua would. It was simply we wanted to explore the region and it was as we were doing our sampling. But, uh, and, I, and we had done a lot of research and Panama had been at the top of our list to give it a try as the first place. So that, that's why we went there first. And it was a great choice. Then when it really came time to make a final decision of where we were gonna be permanently. We also had to consider Europe. We were very serious about Europe. We had to consider a lot more of Latin America, but Nicaragua has, it's hard to describe, but there's, there's a comfort to it. There's a, 
uh, obviously a cost effectiveness to it. There's a, uh, a certain lifestyle, it's just different here. And I feel like I could be happy in any of these countries, right? That's very important as a, as a starting point. It isn't like, um, you know, a Honduras wouldn't be wonderful or Costa Rica wouldn't, wouldn't make the cut or whatever. Like I could pretty much go anywhere in the region and be happy. So it's not a question of who makes me happy and who doesn't. It's a, it's a challenge of trying to figure out which country and city and region and area and whatever makes me happiest. And that's, that's a really hard challenge to try to answer. Um, I'm gonna turn around because this, this behind me is really interesting. You don't normally see this. Uh, and I think that, you know, through a lot of deliberation and a lot of study and a lot of, you know, thinking and, and looking at things, Nicaragua has a certain uh, quality of overall lifestyle that most places in the region, most places just lack. And it also offers an awful lot of adventure and it offers a lot of centrality, which is a thing to say in Central America, of course, but it's very central to Central America, allowing us to easily continue to explore the region. We don't, we're not like in, when you're in Panama, you're very much off in the edge. Now, Panama has the incredible advantage of having a major airport. I so wish I had Panama's airport here. That would make my life so much better. I would be able to fly to the US, to South America, to wherever, anytime so easily that I'm really sad that we don't have that. But short of that, I love that I can jump on a bus and go to Caribbean islands or go to Panama or go to Mexico or in everything in between. I don't have to get on a flight. I can, I can just, there's so much flexibility. And the, the low cost of living means that I'm able to have a much less pressured life. I have a lot more options of what I wanna do if I do want to travel, yes, getting on that, that plane is a little bit harder, but my option to go travel other places is much easier. And I think that uh, in general, we've, we've kind of come to the realization that we really want to spend a bit of time in Latin America more broadly. And Nicaragua is, is kind of a perfect long-term base for that. And that uh, when we're not in Latin America, that we want to be in Europe. And Nicaragua is a acceptable base for that. Obviously, both a Panama or a Mexico, a Guatemala or Costa Rica, all of them have far better connections to Europe than we do. Um, but none of them are that far away and we can use them. So I don't know how great this is at answering that question of why did we pick Nicaragua? Um, or why did we move from from Panama to Nicaragua? Or it does answer it. But I don't think it's as interesting as an answer as people may be hoping. Um, but it's it is a point of interest in general. Um, but but certainly more importantly, uh, I miss Panama. I really want to go back. I'm looking forward to. I'm hoping to be back there in, in April uh, and hopefully be able to convince Maggie to be on the show. And Valentina hopefully will be with me, although she may be flying from a different airport. And uh, hopefully that works out and I'm able to bring you guys a little bit of a show from Panama. If I'm not there in April, I'm definitely going there sometime soon because I've been to Costa Rica. I've been to most of Central America. And it is time for me to get back to Panama and hang out with some friends and see what's going on. Uh, because it's just, it's been too long since I've been there and it's such a fantastic country. But, but having spent almost two years back in Nicaragua now, I can, I can really say I love being in Nicaragua. It has continued to be an adventure for sure. It is a never ending challenge. Life is different here and there's always something new to be experiencing, something new to be learning, but I'm happy that I'm here. This was a great choice, but definitely, you know, all of the region here, every place that I've been, could I make a happy life there? Absolutely. It's, it's really about finding that perfect tweak for you. And, and I guess maybe that is the real topic of the day, right? How do you figure out the exact tweaking of the different countries, of the different regions, of the different cities? that's going to fit for you. And that's one of the most difficult things for sure. If you were, if you're thinking about moving to Latin America anywhere, but we'll just talk about Central America. We have so many countries here in such a small region and they have such a high degree of similarity. I mean, they all speak the same language. They have a lot of shared history. Um, the, the biggest, most obvious differences are things like your differences in visa options. Um, cost of living doesn't vary all that much for the most part. Panama certainly does, Costa Rica, but the others, they're all pretty affordable. Um, it's it, the weather, 
can vary dramatically. Um, and, and it's a, a lot of the things that make the biggest difference. The things that will make you absolutely love day-to-day -day life or absolutely frustrated with it uh, can be really nuanced and, and very difficult things to um, describe or put your finger on. And for example, the difference in, in everyday life between here in Nicaragua and up in Guatemala, not that far away, is enough that you really feel it. Uh, when you're in the country it's just it's noticeable but it's really hard to describe what it is that's different um, because in general so much is so similar and if you're looking at it from an American context or a Canadian context or so it, it really can become a big challenge to be like I, I can't really state while that why they're different but I can tell you for sure if you're in Nicaragua and go to Guatemala or vice versa you're gonna instantly be like oh no totally different places and and the feeling of being in Panama very different or, or, or reasonably different um, but for most people I think that all of this region has a lot of potential if if any of the region works for you probably generally all the region will work for you um, and you're gonna want to spend some time researching different things of course Nicaragua has a huge advantage in safety um, that's that's hard to go with that's hard to not uh, keep as, as a major factor. Panama is reasonably safe, but Nicaragua is ridiculously safe. And so that's that's something you really want to consider uh, in, in for almost anybody, right? But uh, Nicaragua also has a very minor uh, tourism industry. So if you're looking to be around a lot more tourists, this is not the place to be. If you're looking to be a business person and you want to invest, Nicaragua is one of the more challenging, whereas a Guatemala or an El Salvador or Costa Rica are much less challenging. And uh, if you want all those resources, you want to be able to go shopping and do all that stuff. Well, Nicaragua is probably not the place. Panama and Costa Rica and again, Guatemala, they have those advantages. And so there's lots of those little things. You can make a giant matrix, but different things, so wildly different things are valuable to different people. For me, sure, I notice when I go to the big cities that there's much more shopping. But does it matter to me? No, I just notice that it's there. And uh, but I do notice that when I go to the big cities that there's so many more restaurants and food choices and that really affects me but I also have a, a cook at home I had to solve that problem a different way in Nicaragua but I was able to solve it and so that's a different approach that you're able to take there's just a lot of playing with the factors to figure out what what really makes sense for you and so I would encourage all of you yes Nicaragua is absolutely fantastic yes you should come down and check it out yes you should put it on your radar you should make it a a high priority and there's every possibility that this is the right place for you maybe here in Leon maybe out in Granada maybe in San Juan del Sur maybe up in the mountains in in Esteli or in Madagalpa or whatever maybe in the capital right maybe on Ometepe we have so much variation just here within this one small country but don't overlook these amazing other countries that are right next door uh, because they're fantastic too and and you may just absolutely fall in love with one of them and and would otherwise have been sorry now do you have the time to visit every one of these countries and spend enough time to really make a great decision that's something you have to consider so do some research ahead of time I will try to get out and do more research for people because I love doing this and and I do believe you know with all with all the experience I have with the places I have lived um, and, and knowing what factors tend to be universally pretty important, like safety and cost of living. If you're going to have to make a short list, if, you're, if you don't have the ability to go to every country, if you don't have the ability to consider every factor, Nicaragua makes probably the most logical starting point that's going to be applicable to the most broad group of people of anywhere in the region because of safety and cost of living and ease of access like meaning how easy it is to get into the country and stay right from a from a legal or political standpoint and then if you have other factors that significantly outweigh some of those such as a need to be close to a specific border uh, need to be able to get to a major airport because you're going back and forth to Europe all the time then those things will be modifiers on that uh, that may push you to Guatemala or Costa Rica uh, but in general I think that that it really does provide a great starting point for your research 
and it kind of sets an automatic bar. If you're looking at moving to Europe, a lot of people might choose a France or an Italy and say, these I feel I'm, I'm really comfortable. I know I could move to Europe and live in these countries and be really happy. If I'm gonna look at moving somewhere else, it's gotta beat this country. So it gives you a reasonable starting bar that the broadest number of people end up being happy with. And, and that's a good tool for figuring out where you may or may not wanna live in Europe. Does a country for you, it's really loud, does a country for you beat France or Italy? And if so, then you can consider it. And if not, then you should be in France or Italy. It's that simple. And it gives you, you can quickly rule things out. But if you put something that you weren't very likely to like, then lots of things would beat it. And you'd be like, I have so many things I have to look at. So with Nicaragua, I think it falls into that position here. Yes, there's times for some of you, Panama is going to be the better choice. And I can easily see situations where that's true. I love Panama, but it's more of a niche place. It's much more expensive. It lacks the strong Central American culture. It has a blend of Central American and South American culture, which is pretty cool. It has a great airport, but that high cost of living and that higher danger rate, those make it much harder. And it doesn't have the ability to just drive to things. If you're in Panama City and you want to go visit Costa Rica, that is a really long drive. And you're only in remote Southern Costa Rica. You have so far to go to get to Nicaragua and then so far to go before you get to anything else. Um, so that lack of centrality, and it doesn't have a southern border. Its southern border is the Darien Gap. You can't go through that. So you're, you're kind of, you're almost like on a peninsula, which is a big negative. Nicaragua's in the middle of things. That's a big positive. Um, so, so consider Nicaragua to be a starting point and one that has a very high possibility of being your ending point. But be sure to consider other options because there's a lot of great stuff out there. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. I will see all of you guys tomorrow.